Hello my gorgeous ones, welcome to Alicia Budget Beauty. My name is Alicia, here on my channel, I love all things affordable fashion, beauty, I do hauls, tutorials, reviews, indie palette reviews, all sorts of fun stuff. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe, stick around, be a friend. All right, you guys, Nomad Cosmetics has their new palette out that they sent to me and it is such a beauty. It is the New Zealand Stargazing Palette. As you know, with Nomad, they do their little guessing game on Instagram, and I know a lot of people were just thinking like space with this, but turns out it is stargazing from the earth in New Zealand. So if you wanna see it a little bit closer and see four looks with this and get my honest opinions about this new release, keep on watching. So let's go ahead and open her up. And here she is, quite a beautiful palette. We actually have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six multi-chromes in here. So this is now their second palette with multi-chromes. The first one was the Royal Europe palette. And now they put them in this one, which really makes sense. Stargazing and all the lights and everything, space sort of themed. It does make sense to have the multi-chromes. And then you have their typical mattes. It seems like their typical matte formula in here. Like always, part of the proceeds go to benefit a cause like Nomad does. So the little card that they send in, really cool too. It shows you the constellations on here. That's such a neat, I always think of the cutest little details. Um, so the cause is we are proud to support Dark Sky International that works to restore the nighttime environment and protect habits from light pollution. So really cool. You know that a little bit of your money will go to help that. But you guys, I've been really studying this palette since getting it. And it's one of those that I'm really going to have to dig in and create the looks to gather my full thoughts because opening it up, it looks stunning. It looks gorgeous. Like the multi-chromes are multiing in here. Um, I will pop in some swatches over here. I'm not always the best at capturing shifts in my swatches, but you guys, I can promise like these are very shifty shades in here. So it looks beautiful, but I'm studying it just trying to think of what looks I want to do and I'm kind of lost. And so my my true opinion of this will be at the very very end because while I think it looks gorgeous, I'm just like I'm not sure what to do yet with it. We do have some deep smoky um, blue black in here we have a gray which I love and then you've got it's really a, a blue black purple pink leaning palette you do have some hints of neutrals right here as well so who knows when I get to the end of this I may be like this is my favorite palette ever but for right now I'm just like what I'm not sure what to do I'm not usually stumped like that so I'm just really going to go in with this and create a look on each eye today and a look on each eye tomorrow to get four total. I'm going to use every shade in here and like really think how cohesive I think it is and give you my honest thoughts at the end. So let's go ahead into look number one. Okay, you guys. So first I'm going to go in with Tonga, Tonga Re, Rero, Tonga Rero Night Hike. Okay. So what I've decided to do in between my opening and just in this moment, I'm kind of going against my first inclination here because the look that made, there's two looks that make the most sense to me in this palette. And one is just sticking with like the gray, blues, black on one eye, and then like the pinky tones on the other. But because that's so expected, I'm going to kind of mix and match instead. So I'm going to do mainly the blue mattes on this eye, but pop in the pink multi-chrome. It looks like it goes pink to green. And then on this eye, I'm going to do the pink and pop in the blue multi-chrome. Just so I'm doing something slightly different. Okay, this is interesting because this shade that I'm using and the pan looks like it would be more neutrally taupe, almost like a neutrally brown. 
but on me it's definitely pulling cooler tone just like the ghost town usa every shade in there pulls really cool tone like a blue like even if it looks gray it pulls kind of a, a blue tone gray on me oh and i'm going in with carter observatory here so i've noticed on myself that my skin just really loves to pull things cool toned that look neutral, like brown sometimes will pull gray leaning, and then grays will pull blue on me, like with the Xenon palette from Natasha Denona. So it's just something that my skin tone does. So for you, this first shade that I put in might turn out more brown, but on me, it's definitely more of a gray. So I'm just taking this out kind of exaggerated here like that. And then I'm going to go into Tacapo stargazing. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. And I'm gonna blend that in. So this one's more of a, like a royal blue, while the first one is more of a, not quite navy, it's not quite that deep, but it's definitely a, a different tone than this one. All right, for the lower lash line, I'm gonna take Dark Sky Nation, which is the matte black. And I'm just gonna put that on the outer, I think the outer two thirds. And then I'm actually going to next go in with the Auckland Stardom right here to tie in the pink that I'm gonna have on this eye, just since I'm doing two different eye looks, which, I mean, they're gonna be two totally different and they're probably going to look wacky to wear at the same time anyway. But at least if I'm bringing in a shade from the other eye to the other one, maybe it'll look a little less <laughs> wacky. I'm really curious how this is going to turn out. Like I said, I'm not usually this lost when it comes to picking out shades for a look. But... It also may be because I'm doing two different looks. If I was just doing one overall, maybe it wouldn't have been so difficult to try to figure it out. But I'm taking one for the team for you guys, just trying to really make sure that I get enough looks in, really try this palette so I can give you guys my honest opinion. Okay, so here's the Auckland. Auckland, what is it? Stardome. It's a really pretty color. It's a really a deep, a really, really deep rosy mauve. I do like that. Okay, I feel like I'm looking crazy, but it's just one of those that trust the process, wait till the lashes are on and all that. Okay, so now we're gonna go in, I believe, with Southern Cross. Really beautiful, shifty looking multi-chrome here. Up that so I'm really contrasting here whereas my first you know thought was go monochromatic and do the blue but I thought this would give you guys just something different okay that is really pretty you can definitely see a green it almost turns black which i was thinking as i was putting it on like oh this these are so pretty these type of multi-chromes on a black base if you were to put down um you know just like a shadow stick that's black and then you put a kind of jewel tone multi-chrome on top it's really really pretty this almost shifts into a black so maybe it has a probably has a black base to it but okay, now we're gonna go in with 
Aura Australis. And put that on the inner portion of the lid. And also with a brush, I'm gonna pop it in the inner corner. It's pretty, it's, it's subtle, but kind of has that like, could you guys hear my pug? <laughs> Uh, I've talked about him before where he stalks me when I'm in here and puts his nose under there and just snorts and sniffs and tries to smell me. And a few of you have been like, let the pug in, but he is too distracting for me. I love him, but he's so noisy. Okay. The inner corner is pretty. It's that kind of celestial pink that really pops pretty in the inner corner. Okay, definitely having a dark glam moment over here. Now we're gonna go in with the other eye and we're gonna do the Cosmos. So this is the one that looks true gray to me. So, I mean, it's gonna pull gray on me. If the one that looked kind of brown pulled gray, oh yeah. I actually love this. You guys have probably heard me say before that I love gray. And this looks fairly true, but it, it has a slight blue tone on me, which is not surprising. That's how my skin pulls shades, gray shades often, but that is really pretty. I like the depth of this, not too dark, not too light. I really, really like this shade. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in with the Auckland Stardome. That's the mauve rose I put on the lower lash line on the left eye so that we can have, ooh, that's pretty. A little tie into the other eye. Oh, that is, honestly, that is a really, really, really pretty color of the tone is really pretty. Okay, next I'm gonna go in with Southern Lights right here. Looks like a kind of peachy terracotta. And kind of blend that in. That looks really pretty next to that shade, the Cosmos. They just play really nice together, these tones. I'm curious how it's going to blend into this one, the Auckland Stardome. Yeah, I think they will blend. I think they'll look good together. I just want you to be able to see that those blended pretty well together. Okay, I'm gonna go in with Dark Sky Nation again the black so I can kind of do the same thing on this eye where I'm going to come in most of the way and then I'm going to go in with Tecapo Stargazing which is that more royal blue on the rest of the lower lash just to tie into the left eye. Okay and here's that blue. Oops, got a little too far down there. Actually, I think I'm gonna run that just along the bottom of the black to kind of give it like a midnight blue effect. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with Milky Way. So this is the one that instinctually I wanted to pair with the blue, but we're going to contrast a little bit. This one, it's really pretty on the eye as it's going on. I will say that when I swatched it and sticking my finger in it, it feels slightly drier than the others. The others feel very, very smooth. And when I say drier, it's not that it feels dry. It just feels drier than the other five. 
but it's still, it's really pretty on though. It's not quite as deep as it looks in the pan either. It's really pretty. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with Magellanic Clouds, or Magellanic Clouds. Ooh, that's fun. That is fun. Wow, this is like a coral, orange, pink, multi-chrome. That is so, 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 so pretty. Wow. I really like that. I like how that looks next to the blue. Super pretty. Okay, you guys. Actually, I'm liking these. I do. I definitely feel like a like a rock goddess right now. Okay, guys, like I think a... I'm actually really liking these two looks. So definitely, I can never tell till I get my lashes on, my liner, and my lips. So let me do that and be right back. <laughs> guys already saw I went in the different lighting so I could really show this to you guys just in bright natural light because sometimes I'm just afraid that the lighting in here doesn't quite get it across so here is the final look I really hope you guys can pick up the shift here it's really really prominent whenever I'm like looking in the mirror and I turn I mean it shifts green so well um now I will say out of all the shades that I use the one that I think is like mm, not as good is the multi-chrome Milky Way it's still pretty but how I was saying it was a little bit drier than the others the formula is a little bit thin on it as well so it's just not as impactful as some other multi-chromes in my collection especially some others that are blue purple shifting it's still really pretty um just something to note but honestly the southern cross here this one is so pretty and i love the two inner corners aura australis and mag magellanic clouds Ooh, i know i'm butchering that but um let me also tell you guys what i put for lower lash line. I have the Supernova Multi-Chrome Gel Liners from Mora. So I have the shade Atlas and then the shade Buzz. And then on the lips, I did the Alter Ego Liquid Lipstick in Jealousy. And then the gloss is the Lustrous Shine Lip Gloss from um, Believe Beauty in Tropical Punch, just to give a little bit of a sheen. Yeah, you guys, I actually, for going from not having a clue what I was going to do and being a little bit lost, I really do like both of these looks. So now we will do looks number three and four. Okay, you guys, day number two, looks number three and four. I thought about this palette a lot <laughs> and I looked at it a lot. And so I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a pink purple look. And then I'm going to do the most neutral that I can get, the most everyday I can get with these right here. I think this quad is what I'll stick with. And we're just going to see how neutral we can get. Okay, so I'm going to go in with Aura Kai Kinsey. I say that with such authority. Like, I know that's how you say it. I don't, but okay. Aura Kai McKinsey purple and I'm going to pack that on the outer edge and I think as I as I create the look I'm just going to start talking about this palette more about my thoughts about it 
instead of saving it all for the end because I have a lot to say. I've really thought hard about this palette. So I'm still obviously using it and if anything changes at the end, I'll say that. But yesterday I really ended up loving those looks a lot. I thought they were really, really pretty. They kind of surprised me. Um, you know, just not really knowing exactly what I was going to do. And I really liked it. So who's this palette for? Here's what I'm going to say so far. I think this palette is for people that when you see the color story and you go, oh my gosh, I adore that color story. I know exactly what I would do with it this will be for you because I, I think the issue with this palette is not quality like the quality is there the the multi-chromes are really nice that one was not quite as impactful yesterday as I thought it was going to be but it was also one of those that it looked really pretty on um like it was real shiny it just wasn't real shifty and the formula felt a little bit thin. But other than that, like if you love multi-chromes and you love this color story straight out the gate, this will be absolutely for you. I have nothing negative to say about the formula. I also think this could be for people who maybe you're missing some of these shades in your collection. Like I will say this Auckland um, Stardome, I'm gonna use that one again today. It is a beautiful rosy pink that I'm not sure I had. I mean, I'd have to really look through my collection, had a large collection, but just straight out the gate, there was something about the tone of that pink that seemed new and fresh. So if you look at this and you're like, wow, like I, I wouldn't necessarily pick out that color story, but I don't have some of those shades and I'd like to have them. I think this could be for you if you are just a multi-chrome person and you want affordability and you think you could do something with these mattes, whether it's all within this palette or you have to bring in another palette, I think this would also be for you. I mean, I will say Nomad keeps their cost down, especially having multi-chromes now. They didn't use that cop-out excuse that a lot of the brands are using now where they say, Oh, but I have all these special shades and all these multi-chromes now. So I'm going to go up $50 in my palettes. Girl, bye. I'm so tired of that. And that'll be in a, a video I have planned um, getting pretty candid about pricing, um, specifically with indie brands. So, you know, this is an affordable way to try multi-chromes or to add some more to your collection, which I also really appreciate and love. Um... Now, if you are someone that when you saw the color story like me and you were like, I have no idea what to do with that. And like I said, I've, I mean, I've got a ton of palettes. You guys have seen me play with hundreds of palettes and I don't often get that stumped. It may be a little, you know, just, uh, I don't want to work for it. And you may want to pass. Or you could be like me where I thought that, but then going in and play with it, I've really been enjoying my look. So you may want to be stretched. Maybe you need some, um, a little push outside of your box. I personally really enjoy that. I like when a palette challenges me at this point because, you know, I've played with so much. There's so many palettes that are so similar out there. And I do think this is a, a really unique color story. I, I can't dupe this palette in my collection. I mean, maybe I could find a similar shade or the same-ish shade if I look through every single palette and I'd have to put like 15 together. I'm not going to dupe the multi-chromes though in this. Maybe one or two are similar to others, but as far as mattes, it would take me a while to find all the closest dupes. So I do think it is a unique color story. You know, if you're someone that doesn't really like color, this isn't for you. <laughs> I mean, there are a couple of attempts at some 
uh, let's see, where am I going here with this? Okay, this one. There are some attempts at some neutrals in here, but they're like neutrals that, you know, like a, a gray blue or this one that's kind of a peach. It's not, you know, a true brown. So definitely not a neutral girls palette. I will say I understand where they were going though with the theming of this. It does make sense the more I looked at it, thought about it. I get the, you know, the way it goes from some lights and some colors when you're stargazing into a deep dark night with the black and the deep blue, the golds and, you know, for the multi-chromes for the stars. I understand the theming for sure. I also understand where they were trying to go with attempting to put some neutralish shades in here to appease those that need neutrals. I don't know if they're neutral enough or enough neutrals in it to convert neutral lovers for this palette. But I will say I appreciate that they stuck to a theme because here's the thing that I was thinking about when really thinking about this palette, you know, trying to appease the masses, it's really hard to do that and not be boring. So if you're going to make a palette that is going to appeal to everyone, most likely you're going to get a pretty boring palette and a palette that we've all seen before, nothing new, nothing exciting. And then the palette would be kind of ripped to shreds, judged because of being boring, not being inventive, being repetitive. So I appreciate when a palette is like, you know what, this is the theme and these are the colors we're going to put in it. And if it's not your color story, that's totally fine. Wait for the next, you know, launch. You don't have to tear apart a palette because you don't love the color story. And... I would rather a brand be kind of adventurous in a unique color story than be boring. And I do think this is a unique color story. So I didn't want to wait till the very end to just talk about that when I'm not actually putting on my makeup because it would m make this video too long. I know my videos are already fairly long. I don't know that very many people get to the end of them very often. And that's a shame because sometimes that's when I feel like my most cohesive thoughts come out and my, my honest thoughts, my well thought out thoughts at the very end that people don't stay tuned for. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to talk about it as I do my makeup here. I like this. This is cool. This is a really cool look. I'm liking that a lot. Okay, and I think I'm going to go in with the Aurora Australis. Again, I already did this one yesterday for an inner corner, but it's just so pretty. By the way, I didn't really tell you guys what all I was using. So the purple I had not used yesterday. That's new. Auckland uh, Stardom was one I used yesterday. Then I went in with Southern Lights, and then I went in with Queenstown Skyline. So I've now used every shade in here, um, except for one multi-chrome I'm gonna put over here. Then bottom is the Cosmos, and then this Aurora Australis is going in the inner corner. So by the end of this, I will have used every shade and a few of them twice. Oh yeah, actually, I forgot to tell you guys, this multi-chrome is the Carina Nebula, so I hadn't used that one either. Okay. Now for this eye, this is going to be our attempt to see how neutral, wearable we can really get this look. So um, I am going in with Southern Lights. So we're not going to go super, super deep. This is going to be the deepest shade that we use. And I'm going to be so tempted to make this deeper, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stick to my plan. I really, really like this shade. The thing is about this palette is I love, honestly, every shade in here. 
I think each one is beautiful. Perf the mattes all perform really, really nicely. These blended beautifully together. Sometimes purples can be patchy. That was not patchy at all. So I love every shade. I'm just still a little bit, do I love every shade together? Well, I think it's going to take some getting used to. I think, again, I think this is a palette that stretches me and challenges me and gets me to judge my final look as opposed to looking at the palette or even the process, you know, as I'm going, I may be like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But then the end, I mean, both those looks yesterday I love. So what's not to love about the palette? But it's a little bit of a trust the process palette, unless you're just someone that looks at this and you're like, yep, I know exactly what I'm doing with that. Then you may have to work at it a little bit and let go of some doubts and control. But and this is Queenstown Skyline, by the way. That I'm going in with here. Not sure that those blend that nicely together. Honestly, they kind of make a muddied shade that I don't love. Let me go back in with the Southern Lights and see if I can, you'd think that those would blend well, but something about them together kind of made like a gray, which doesn't, I don't really see why it would do that. It's better going back in here. Okay. I know I said I was going to try not to deepen this up, but this is still in the realm of neutralish. So I'm going with the Tonga Riro Night Hike. It's that one from yesterday that I thought was going to be more of a taupe, but it pulled kind of gray on me. Since that made a kind of strange gray area where it was blending, it actually kind of made this shade strangely enough. So in order to make that not really look like a mistake, I'm going to try to deepen up this crease with this shade. Plus it helps with my eye shape. It needs a little bit of dimension there. Okay. I think I'm going to go into the Cosmo, same as this side just since they're two different eye looks to kind of tie these together. And I count gray as a neutral. So this turned pretty pink as you start to pack it on. It starts peach, but then the more you pack on, it turns kind of pink. So I think it's very hard to get a neutral look out of this, which is fine if you're not looking for that. But if if you are thinking you're going to get some like everyday neutral, you know, it's not going to happen with this palette. And again, that's fine. Just depends on what you're looking for. I do wish, I wish that there was something else better to blend the... Queenstown skyline with because it would make the most sense to blend it into Southern Lights like I did, but I just don't think that they blended that well together. All right, Jewel Box is the multi-chrome left that I have not used. That's very, very, very pretty. I like that. I, you can get a lighter um, tone look from this though. It doesn't have to go deep. We see that if you just stick to the shades that I used on this eye. So maybe if you're not looking for a neutral, but you just want to know that it can go kind of mid-tone to lighter, not so dramatic, it can. Okay. 
Then I am, my lips are so dry. I can't wait to put lips, lip stuff on it. If you see me keep licking it, that's why. Okay, now we're going into Magellanic Clouds. Again, same one I used yesterday. And even on the same eye. Uh, this is one of my favorite shades in here. It's so electric, orange, coral, pink. I love it. I also love this one. These two inner corner shades are gems. Okay, I think that is where I am going to end. So I'm going to put on the lashes liner, the lip. I'm going to do the same thing where I show you it in better lighting. Come back and wrap up all my thoughts on New Zealand stargazing. <laughs> Okay, so you saw the look in the other lighting, the natural lighting. And again, I hope you can catch the shifts. This one shifts from a pink to a like lime green. There's even like some gold in there. This one is like a coral gold orange and it shifts and you can see like a lime green as well really 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 pretty it looks a little bit crazy I feel like when one's so heavy and then the other one's lighter but I really like both of them um for the liner on this eye I have the um chromosome from she glam it is in subliminal and then this eye I put in the supernova multi-chrome liner atlas from mora and then on the lips I have kiko milano smart lipstick in 424 and for gloss they give it just like a hint of like a a gold peach to reflect the eye is the nomad cosmetics um fits a day Provence. And let's go over this palette now, you guys. I mean, I pretty much said everything that I wanted to say as I was creating these looks. So I'm not going to go into too much more detail. Honestly, I really enjoy every shade in here. I'm just not sure how well it all goes together cohesively, but I'm happy to have it in my collection. I especially Especially love the multi chromes in here. Really, oh gosh, it's hard to say. I mean, I love, I loved them all. My least favorite was probably Milky Way. I wanted a little bit more shift to that one, but it's still really pretty. But the others, I love so, so, so much. The inner corners are just bam, so good. Um, I really love the tones of this pink. I think the pink and purple go perfectly together. So all in all, you guys have to really just look at this palette and think, will I get wear out of it? Don't worry about quality. The quality is there. It's a color story thing. I feel like with this one, if this appeals to you, go for it. If you're like, I will never wear those colors. It's not for you. And just wait for the next one. You guys will have to let me know what your favorite look was in the comments. And as always, have fun shopping, budget shopping. Bye.